All right, got our crank so now we're going to move on to assembly. So we got to set up our case main bearings here and get them ready to go together. First thing we got to do is get all our bearings figured out what we're going to use. So right now I got a I want to install one of these uh, seals here instead of using the stock slinger. So the first thing I do is see if this is going to fit up in there correctly or it's going to be nice and loose where it doesn't do much. Let's see what we use. So first thing is, is this going to be loose or tight in the case? That's the first thing. Uh, about half and half. So it kind of goes in there. You can hear it slipping. Okay, so that's a halfway decent sign. The next thing I'm going to do, we're going to put a clip in here. Right, I can either use the uh, one that came with it, or I can use a genuine Harley one. I always like using genuine stuff I can, so we're going to go ahead and try that. First thing I want to do, I want to get the twist out of it. So that's what I'm trying to get it to be that way. There we go. These have a lot of spring steel in them, so they're, they don't move very much. Now this clip has a pretty good bow to it also. So let's look at our other one over here. This one's a lot flatter, but it's got a little issues with it too. So let's go ahead and try to straighten out a couple of these bad spots here. Try to keep that nice and whoop, get the camera where you can see it. Try to keep it nice and straight as we can. All right, this one has less bow to it, so I'm going to use this on the left side over here. Goes in there like that. Okay, now I'm going to take the. Uh, New seal piece. I'm going to put some Loctite on this thing and try to keep it up in there tight where it belongs, but not in the bearings, obviously. So I'm going to use sleeve retainer Loctite. I'm going to put that right here on the edge. I'm going to make sure this does not get in the bearings. That would be a bad thing. wrong. That I don't like. I don't want to jam it all the way through the nice bearing surface I just got done fixing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this clip out. seal piece in. Make sure I have Loctite on that. I'm going to put it in just deep enough <coughs> Excuse me, that I can put the clip in behind it. clearance between it and the clip, so don't want to go. It went past the clip that time. 
Test the groove, I should say. Okay, so now the clip is in there. Let's see what I'm doing there. We had to get the clip back in the groove. When the seal comes up inside the clip, the clip cannot go out big enough to get in or out. It kind of locks it in. So you have to push it past, put the clip in it, and shove it back. So now you can see how the seal sticks past the clip. So it can't come out. Okay. Now we have that nasty problem called Loctite in that bearing surface area, which is not exactly where I want it to be. So we take our clean rag and we get up down inside there and we knock it out into my light. There, maybe that'll help a little bit. So we want to make sure we wipe any Loctite out of inside there. Loctite is very bad on bearing surfaces. We tend to make them not bearings, which is a bad thing. Okay, so I wiped that nice and clean in there. I don't know if you can get in there and see, but too bad. Okay, now take our assembly loop and coat the bearing surface. And don't be afraid to put it down on top of that retainer in there where all that Loctite was. At least that way, if the Loctite mix it with the oil, it probably won't work very well. So we don't want to get it in the bearing at all. And we put a little bit on the seal with it here too also. Okay. Now we got a washer with or without a titty on it. That'd be called a titty right there. So the one that doesn't have the titty goes in the inside. These are our two bearing races here. So they drop in. Okay. Now the right side. Has the same snap ring groove up in there. It holds everything together. So this one had a little bit of a cup to it. So I'm going to cup it so the cup sticks up a little bit. That way when the pressure, when the bearing pushes up against the clip, it's going to want to make the clip tighter, not looser. Tighter. Ah, damn it. Let's see why this clip was bent. It's a lot bigger and tighter. Okay, it's in there pretty good. I'm double check, make sure it's in there good. Make sure it's all the way recessed up in there where you want it to be. Okay. It's in there tight. Okay, now the washer has a little tit on it. Goes into the hole right there. Right above the clip. Like that. So that keeps this wash from rotating. You don't want the washer rotating against the clip because it can knock the clip out. So we go ahead and lubricate this one. Okay. Stack here that we already have pre-fitted. So 
I'm going to go ahead and lube these up. Drop in. Lube them some more. This is the only lubricant they're going to get for a while because they're splash lubricated. So I'm going to make sure they get a good load in there. You rotate the bearing around to make sure all the rollers have oil all the way around them. Okay. Now when you're all done, you want to make sure this bearing snap ring here, or not snap ring, excuse me, bearing cage right here is below the surface of the case race because your thrust washer is right here. Go right there and push against the thruster, I mean against the um, case race, not against the cage. If you push against that cage, it will lock up those rollers. It'll also try to push it out the other side. So you want to make sure that the high spot is the case race, not the bearings. If it's the other way around, you're going to have to do something to make it not do that. So whatever it takes. Okay, so that fits in there real nice like that. Now this goes on the flywheel, so do that. Now before I put these on the flywheel, i got to measure them. Get an idea what we have in there to start with. When we make changes, we'll know what changes we need to make. So right now, this one here, got to blow this back. Forget where the view was at. Okay, this one here is at 76 thousandths. That's how thick this, the washer is. This one over here is 83 thousandths. So we got one thick one and one thin one. So usually I start with a thicker one against the cam side. That way we make sure we have clearance here on the cam bush and stuff. You don't want the crank pin coming around hitting this area. The left case here doesn't have anything in here to hit against, so we'll sacrifice clearance on that side. Okay, now the thrust washers go on the flywheel right here. And you have a little titty right here to keep them from rotating. So that's how they go in. We'll be back. Okay, we're back on this motor. Got interrupted there. So we're going to put our washer here on the flywheel. Now this flywheel has a little titty right here. That this hole goes over. And so it just fits on there. Now 45s will wash it around so you can put them on either this way or this way. Big twins, they have a scallop cut in them. So you can only put them on one way. 45s don't matter. So you just put a little bit of oil right there to hold them. Right on. Let's make sure this is the thicker one. It is. Okay, it's on there pretty nicely. Okay, we got a right bearing in all the way. We didn't get the left one here finished up. Got sidetracked on doing the right. So the left washer here has no titty on it. So that sits right down in the bottom. Next that seal retainer piece in there. Put some oil in there. And we stick these bearings in there like this. Rollers up. <clears throat> Make sure you lube them up real good again, just like the other side. And make sure they're below the surface. So make sure they're not sticking up at all. Okay, now we want to see if the crank in play is and also see what the fitment of the bearings are, make sure they're good. <coughs> so we go ahead and slip the left case on. Okay, 
there. Let me check our fitment of the bearing. See the movement of the flywheel inside the case there. <clears throat> Pull it up a little bit, you might be able to see a little better, but it's not much, it's pretty tight. So this motor's fairly snug, so you'd have to break it in, so don't know if you can hear it or not, but anyway, that's a little bit in there. It's really tight, so put it back down. Okay, now we take the right side case. We do the same thing, we slip it on there. And before we go all the way in, we'll check to see uh, what this clearance feels like also. There's a little bit of movement there. I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a little bit in there. Okay, so they both have a little bit of clearance. So you can check them individually, but before they go together, it'll be easier. Okay, now right now, try to push the case together, not going together. So something is not working. So either one of those washers slipped over on its titty. Or they're too thick because right now it's not going together. I'm trying to feel for in play, and I don't. There's some, so I know that's not the problem. There, that's straighten it up. So now the now the case is going right together after I did that. Still not going right together. Still fighting a little bit for some reason. And push down now. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts in here to center it. And you want to make sure you beat the case together because the flywheels are tight. Didn't have any inflay in them. You would warp the crank again and knock it out of true. We have to go back to the stand again. Okay, there's one dowel in it. Put the other dowel in here. That ain't working. On this side. the crank's free. That one went in finally. There's the other one. Kind of stubborn there. And I wasn't using a steel hammer because that knocks the threads. Okay. Put the nut on there right there. Crank turns over freely. Now if it screws one, one way to the other, which means as you rotate it, it goes sideways laterally, then that means you have a misalignment in your bearings or your flywheels or something's out of whack. 
and it would destroy itself if that happens. So you turn it both directions and see what happens. See if there's any thrusting where it starts getting real hard to turn. This one's not doing it, so that's a good sign. And it also slides nice and freely here. Doesn't take much pressure, only takes a couple pounds of pressure. So that's good too. So that means all that line holding we did worked because it's lined up real nice. So it's nice and free. So. Okay, so now we gotta check our in play. Now this here is the factory tool. It's a big twin on one side, 45 on the other. This has a little pointer that goes in here. Turn around the other direction for a 45. Just tap it lightly. You get the crank where you push it, so you push it all the way to the inside. Take your pointer, put it up against the case erase there, you blow this up a little bit. And you can see it better. So we get the pointer right here on the case race, right here. Then you go ahead and push the crank out, like that, and there's a gap in there. Now you notice how gravity went right back down. And we take out our feeder gauge right here, and we measure the gap. Nowadays they have indicators, but in the old days this is how they did it. Okay, now we want 18 to 22 is what I like running. I think I just stuffed in there. Okay, 24, 23 or 2, whatever that, 23 is not going in. 20. Pull back a little bit. So you can see how the 20 goes right in there. Or 22. A little loose. So that means we can probably take out about 3 thou. Double check this. Let's try that 23 again. It's 23. Two goes in tight. So we're about 21 probably. Definitely 21. Okay, so I think I will find some washer to give me about two or three thousand less. We'll get close to that 18 thousand number. Because as we put goop in here, damn it. As we put sealer between the cases here, it might grow in a thou or two, so. I'm going to cut it to the lower side when I tighten it all up. We should come out about 20 when we're done, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to play with that a little bit. The other thing you want to make sure that's correct is you want to make sure that the rods are, are centered on your parting lip here. Because you can put, you can play around those thrust washers and move the crank one way or the other. And you want to try to keep it relatively close to center. So right now you can see we're below center. And we go up like that. We're still not up the center yet. So right now the crank is too far to the right. So we do have some room up here in the pistons to be off a little bit, but you usually want to try to keep that as close as you can. Now the rod itself might not be cut exactly 100% even, so you have to look at it. You have the top view, and both rods look pretty good now. When I shove it all the way to the left, it looks like we're just about centered. Then all the clearance goes to the right. So that means our right flywheel washer needs to be a little bit thicker than the left one. 
So I'm going to see if I can change those around a little bit, move the crank over about 15 thousandths, 10 to 15, and tighten the clearance up by about 3. And we'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, I got this crank apart and I got my two different washers here now. So these two here give us 161 and a half thousand total. The two old ones here were 159 and a half. Like that. So, but the difference is the thickness of the two washers are different. This one here is 74 and this one here is 83. These ones here are 89 and 69, 70. So what we're doing is we're going to move the crank over to the left uh, about 15 thousandths roughly and then uh, I think that's where I'm coming around. And we're taking a couple more thou clearance out of it so that should drop us down to our end plate number we're looking for and center the crank up in the cases that we want to do. Uh, I'm using genuine Hurley uh, thrust washers here. These are brand new ones that were had to get all this cosmic off here. These are all World War II surplus. So lots of original stuff in my junk, or dad's junk I should say. So we're going to go ahead and use those and we'll do another mock-up see what happens. So the thick one's going to go on the right side because we want to move the flywheel to the left. It goes on that side. And the thin one goes on the left side. Alright, let's see what happens now. If we did it all correctly, it should work out just where I want it to be. Make sure the crank still spins. Make sure you're not binding it up. So if you force it to bind, it's going to reward you by bending. That went in a lot easier this time. Fighting me like it was. Okay. This time I'll throw a couple extra bolts in there just for the hell of it. Sure our numbers are good all the way across the board. Go ahead and put all of these in. This should be our final mock-up if I did it right. So you want to tighten up your three dowel pins first. All right, good. Okay, still got in play. And I like to get these two top bolts tight next. Oops. 
Then you go ahead and get the two leftover ones on there. one down here. Okay. Make sure it turns freely. Feels good. Look at my rod centering here. Pretty equal. So if you look at that big rod right there, you can see it. That's where you can actually see it. What I'm trying to show here. Whoop. Okay, so we have the, the width of the rod here, and you have this this case marking there. So if you look at it. We're all the way to one watt, one side, and when you shove the crank to the other side, it goes over center of the other direction on the rod itself. So see how it goes back and forth? There it is. So see how you go over center each way of the rod? That means the rod is pretty well centered in the case, where the crank is. And obviously there's still got in play in it also, which is also important. So we're going to check our in play. If I did everything right, it should be about 20 thou. And there's our 20. Let's try 21. It wasn't tight, it was just, it went in pretty easy. Twenty-one does not go in, so we're at twenty. Goes right in. Okay, so we're at twenty thou clearance right now without any sealer. Sealer might add one or two to that. So we are right in the middle of 18 to 22, which is what I like running. So, this is our in play right now, is this much? Nice and loose. So, we can probably tighten it up a little bit, but it's better to have it loose and let the oil be able to get into those washers than have it tight and not be able to get in there. But I think I take two more thou out, and then we'll put glue in there to bring it back up to 20. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this back apart. I'm going to see if I can add two thou to the washers. I don't know if i got an assortment to do that. I don't think I do, but I'll check. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it at this number. I'm going to go ahead and goop this case up and then bolt it together for real. And we're going to use my, uh, my three-bond sealer, which everybody asks me what the hell I use. I use this. Three-bond, 1184. So... Otherwise known as gray shit. That's just gray crap here. So, all right. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that, and we'll come back. Okay, I'm finishing up doing the uh, gooping of the cases here. So I just dab this on my finger and spread it out evenly. Get a nice, thin, even coat. It's very important not to overdo this, because you don't want this crap inside your motor. Not good for it. And just put a nice good little layer on there. All right. See, it's great crap. So I got a nice good coat on there. Now 
Now in this case half here there's a lip right in here. See if I can blow this up a little bit so you can see better. So you can see a little lip down in here. Yeah, whichever one you're looking at right now down in this area. So you don't want to put a uh, goop in that lip because that just shoots it inside your motor. You just want to have the upper surface here coated real nice. The right case half has a lip on it too, but the lip is reverse. The lip comes the other direction. So you put a nice bead all through the lip. Where am I at? You're down here to the cylinder someplace. There, get over there. Well, my fingers, that would help. So down here in the lip right here, you make sure you got a good layer of goop inside the lip because it's got a the shoulder that keeps from going on the inside. So when you press all this together, the, the uh, sealer will go in there and seal up really good and tight and it'll squirt it to the outside edge, the excess. Not to the inside. We don't want the goop on the inside of the case. Very important. Now I went ahead and changed the washer out here on the left side. Pull that back out so you can see. And I'm going to add about three Three and a half thou clearance. I mean, um, thickness. That's so going to take out about three and a half thousands. So that should drop me down to about seventeen thousands, which is just under my eighteen to twenty-two that I want to run. But this motor is barely tight. The customer's going to break it in easy, so I can put it in a little bit tighter. It's got all new parts, so it's, there's a lot of high spots that need to wear away. So after it breaks in, it should be back up in that nineteen to twenty area where I want to be. So, so every motor is built per customer needs. Not necessarily what he thinks he needs, but what I think he needs. There is a difference. Sometimes they match, but not always. Just like before, we put all the dowels in first. You don't waste a whole hell of a lot of time doing this because the glue is setting up as we are going. Now these nuts have a little bit of a shoulder to them here, so I always put the shoulder to the inside where it belongs. Just makes a nice neat job. In the real world, it doesn't really mean much. The nut will tighten up either way. And it doesn't hurt to make it nice though, nice and even. Yeah, I don't think you can see the goop spreading and tightening that. See the goop layer right there. A little closer yet. Boom. Now as I tighten this up, this nut, you can see how that layer of goop pops out a little bit. That's what you want to see, a nice even layer all the way around the whole case. And that way you know you got a complete layer of sealer around the whole case. If there's a flat, if there's a spot that's missing goop, that means you didn't quite put enough on there. Crank still turns freely. It's good. Put all these in here real quick. I'm not torquing them yet, I'm just getting them all in there. Do the same pattern I used before. Do the three dowels first, then you do the two bolts, and then you do the two studs that are left.
And every time I put these nuts in, I've been doing it the same way. So you got one side that shows where the coating's coming off, and the other side, the park rising, still looks nice. Got to make sure it still looks good when you're done. Some of these studs are new, some of these are new originals, and some are new or just old original ones that were in the motor. So they, they still look pretty nice. Okay. Now that stud doesn't have very many threads on the inside. And that's pretty tight on the studs so when that's putting the vise. And move the nut over a little bit on this one side here. See how the threads are sticking up a little bit? So we'll put it in the vise and do it. And you can see how the goop gets where, where the stud goes when you squeeze it. Now having that goop in the parting lip will also make it seal inside that stud register a little bit too so just in case it got past the goop against the case there's a little bit on the stud there too to help seal it kind of a secondary measure plus if the two nuts are tight on each end it kind of encapsulating oil leakage also but in the real world they should be dry okay that gives one more thread still one short that stud slightly short but Okay, so motor still turns over nice. Still got good in free play. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more torque on these studs. So I get my double box wrench, otherwise known as a torque wrench. And put a little squeeze on it. how much foot pounds of torque that is but about that much it's kind of a feel thing well, that stud loosened up on me just from sitting squeezed the goop out that was the first one I did probably now one trick you can do for torque and you just squeeze your wrenches together like this That way you don't have the motor trying to run away from you on the bench. Now these are quarter inch studs so you can't get too carried away with the torque. It's pretty good torque I'm putting on these things. The Harley hardware is pretty stout so it can take it within reason. Pretty tight. Okay, I'm gonna let this um, sealer set for a few minutes, and I'll come back and double check those torques. It's it's, it's uh, squeezing out all the sealer out the whole time we're talking here. Okay, now you gotta go ahead and wipe off the sealer. And we got it in here inside the rods right here. Just wanna make sure I get that out of there before we get this all inside the motor. So I'm gonna knock this out real quick. Where it sets up. Now this sealer here you just kind of rub against it and it comes off. You can also put a little bit of three by a little uh, brake clean on there and it'll cut it pretty quick also. Usually I just kind of rub on it. it comes off pretty easy. I got to check the in play here, but I want to get this off first so I don't keep getting my rods all full of it. Rod got to look down the whole side of it over here. Wipe it off. All right. Now I can work this a little bit and not worry about getting crap all over my rods. 
nice and loose and slippery. Good. Checking tool back on. Okay. Pull on my feeler gauge again I put away. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going to check with 18. I think it's going to be more like 17, but we'll see. Let that slide all the way that direction. Check it. Ah, very tight 18. Loose 17. So about 17 and a half. So that came right pretty much where I wanted it. So that's good. So as the motor breaks in, you'll gain two, maybe three thou uh, in play. So that puts you in, you're still being that 18 to 22. Because we're at 17 and a half right now, 17. So, so that's with a break in motor. If the motor's not going to be broken in very hard, very easy, a hard break in, then you, you put it in about 20 to 22 right from the get go. Race motor, you definitely put them at 22. So the less break in you give it, the looser you got to make it initially. Otherwise, you stick. Okay, the crank's in there now. Spins nice and freely. The pinion shaft's not wobbling any there. See, it's going, oh, staying put more or less until I hit it with the case each time. So everything's working nice and free. We've got a rod. We have crank clearance and we got rod clearance. See, see, I got both going. See, they sound different. See, that's rod, that's crank. Everything's nice and loose, just like you want it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean all up the goop and then retorque the bolts and we'll come back and look at the cams next, or the oil pump, probably the oil pump.